Hi guys, thank you for your support so far. For those who have watched the first video on the advanced tips and tricks, I hope you found it useful. For those who have not, feel free to click on the link in the description below to my first video guide for some useful tips and tricks on the Vital Bracelet. So for today's video, I would like to talk about rates. I've decided to make this video as I received some questions on my video and on I read some questions on Reddit as well about rates. And I realized as I did my own research and I was as I was uh, going through the rates, there were a lot of questions I had. And I wanted to know more, but I just couldn't find any guides that answered some of my questions. So rates actually reward you with the limited edition banner and a storage capsule from ranking high. So naturally, a lot of players want to do well during the raids. So after participating in the Diablo Mon and the Black War Grey Mon raids, I have come up with some useful tips and tricks for raids that I would like to share so that you may benefit as well. And just like the previous video, I will be leaving timestamps so that you can skip ahead if you think you already know this tip to save you some time. Now without further ado, let us begin with the first tip. The first tip is that when you are rushing through your rate levels to get a higher rate level, you should organize rate groups as much as possible. When you organize a group and you attack at the same time, in the same stage, you will notice your teammates supporting attack appearing at the same time. Now this is great because if you rush through the stages together, you can proceed at the same time to the next stage. And this supporting attack is really helpful for you to clear the bosses quickly, right? And you know that your supporting attacks are working, especially when you after you attack, a support attack animation shows up. That means literally, real time, these players are playing alongside you. If you only you do not notice a support attack animation, and instead you only notice an opening animation when you first join the raid level and you see some attacks happening, that is just the animation for players who have attacked the stage before you. But it does not mean that the player is currently raiding the same stage as you. So having a group to rush through the stages is really great for you to rush through raid levels because once you clear the same level, you can move on to the next stage together and you have and you can go up to about 10 players or so, 10 times the damage of how much you usually do will help you to clear the stages really quickly. And you can group together and team up to fight through the stages very fast by aggregating the damages all together. So that's a really great way to rush through your levels if you are able to organize raid groups. But there are some players who can't organize a group or they don't really have a large community in their area to play with for their time zone. Now, here's a second tip. If you can't organize a raid group, then there is another way that you can use to rush through your raid levels, which is to wait for the daily refresh time of GMT plus 9, 12 a.m. So basically, that's in Jap Japan's time zone, 12 a.m. That is when the daily refresh happens and all the players will get their free three attempts for the day. Now, when you wait for that specific time, what happens is a lot of the players will be clearing their free attempts for the day during that timing. And because they are playing at the same time, if you were to participate in the raid at that time, you will likely be able to catch that wave of players playing on the same stage as you. And that will give you an opportunity to clear the stage faster rather than playing at a different time zone from this timing and you will just fight, be fighting the stage alone and that will take a very long time for you to clear that raid stage so GMT plus 9, 12 a.m just search it according to your local time zone what is that timing and hopefully that is a good timing for you to participate in a raid if you need to rush through and you're still unable to find raid groups to do that then that is your best alternative if the first two tips do not work for you but you still need to level up your rate levels quickly, there is one more way you can do that, which is using your rate tickets wisely. And when I say wisely, I mean don't use all of them at once. So you might receive rate tickets, sometimes uh, you get three, sometimes you get five of them. Don't use them on the same stage. The wisest way is to use them one at a time. So for each rate level your own, 
just use one ticket. You can wait a few hours and what happens is that during those few hours, other players will participate in the stage that you have participated in and their damages cumulatively would help you to clear that stage. So, by the time you try again, that stage that you were on would likely have been completed and you can move on to the next stage. On the other hand, if you use all the tickets at once, for example, if you use all three tickets you just received on the same stage, you are unlikely to clear that stage within those three attempts. And what end up, ends up happening is that after you use up those three tickets, you have to wait for other players to clear that rate level as well. So the difference is when you use up all three, when that stage is finally cleared, you don't have the chance to clear the next stage that is available to you now. And you have to wait for either the daily refresh to come in or another fresh batch of tickets. So the best way to use the tickets is to use them one at a time one stage at a time and just wait for other people to clear the stage. That is if you are unable to once again organize raid groups or to play during the daily refresh time when most players will be playing, then the best way for you to maximize the use of your tickets is to use them one at a time. Now tip number four is to use items during raids. Now when you use items, they give you a lot of advantages. The first item you should use is a damage multiplier and you can use two of them if you notice in my demo here you can see that i've selected the all damage multiplier as well as the virus damage multiplier in this case the black war greymon is a virus type and that will allow me to multiply by damage when i use that item aside from the damage multipliers you also want to use the evasion which is really useful because it's uh, it lasts you all five turns of your battle and i also like to use the 10 percent reboot it is expensive to use that but there's a chance that when you're fighting at certain levels of the rates the boss might actually be able to hit you about two times or three times and if they do your digimon might might lose all its hp and that reboot will help you to revive and to last through till the fifth turn as much as possible you want to last all five turns because the principle of the raid is the more damage you deal, the more points you can get. The multipliers multiply your damage and thereby giving you more points. The evasion and the boost will help your Digimon last longer so that you can hit the bosses in all five turns as much as possible. Some players use the defense chip as well, but I realize that even if I use the defense chip, the, the boss is still able to kill off my Digimon in about 2 hits so it doesn't really make a difference for me and I'd rather use my money on the evasion which you will see that sometimes they do evade the boss's attacks um, and the other one is the reboot that I find really useful to increase survivability so these are the main items that I use during my raids another useful tip but it's not really related to raids is your arena tickets now, I like to use the arena tickets as ways to recover your vital values after a raid attempt, especially if you know that the raid level you're clearing, you're unlikely to win. So what happens when you lose a raid battle after you have damaged the boss and you're unable to defeat him is that your vital values will actually drop by about 450. As you can see in my video here, after losing, the vital values have dropped by about 450 so now it's not at its maximum when it's not at its maximum your digimon stats are not performing as well as it can be so what you want to do is to quickly fight an arena battle and you can use your arena tickets for that so just switch over as you can see in the video i switch over to fight against another ultimate level or a perfect level will be fine so when you fight an ultimate digimon you will get 500 vital values recovering it to the maximum of 999 again or you can fight three perfect levels and that will give you about 600 vital values which will bring it up to 9999 as well so that is what you want to do and that's a useful way to use your arena tickets some people might find it more useful to save the arena tickets for the specific arena stage that they want to achieve a very high ranking on you can do that I think you can do both it doesn't need to be mutually exclusive but for me i just like to save my arena tickets on that uh, no limit 
evolution limit stage because that allows me to uh, fight through any Digimon that I want quickly to gain my vital values and it does give me some uh, raid tickets. For those who don't know, recently the arena rewards have been revised to include raid tickets and the higher you rank on the arena stage, the more raid tickets you can get. So that's a way to improve your raid performance as well by focusing on the arena stage that you think will you will do well in that gives you the most raid tickets but for me i like to save the raid uh, arena tickets as a way to increase or recover my vital values after a raid now tip number seven here it's not really a tip for raids but it's a really dirty trick honestly there's no other way to put it but it's a really useful one that i found myself using from time to time but honestly don't overuse it don't use it as the main way you're wearing your vital bracelet because otherwise it really defeats the purpose of the device's original design which is to keep you healthy okay but this tip basically tricks your vital bracelet into thinking that it's still detecting your heart rate honestly a chance upon this trick while looking through youtube and i found this a uh, useful video from this youtuber called shiro core so basically, he, <clears throat> he, he demonstrated how to use this trick and now I'm just sharing it with you for those who have not come across this video and I hope you find it useful. But honestly, like I said, don't abuse it. So basically, how the trick works. How the trick works is that you have your vital bracelet, of course, and you just need to find some kind of foam. I think a bubble wrap will work as well. So basically, something that is wide but uh, not totally transparent but it's translucent enough for the light the red light to pulsate through so for example here i have a foam that looks you know uh small but it's uh, enough for me to wrap my vital bracelet around and just get a phone that plays one of these videos a video that that, that features a heart rate right and it's easily searchable on youtube you can just search a heart rate trick or trick your heart rate into uh, thinking it's your wrist or whatever you, one of these pulsating videos will appear so what you do is you just put the foam between your vital bracelet and then you just wrap the vital bracelet around the phone that is playing the video so how it works is that the video with its pulsating light will emit the light through the foam or the bubble wrap and then it is detected by your vital bracelet so your vital bracelet will think that it's still detecting your heart risk heart, heart rate so this is a useful way for you to continue operating your vital bracelet without actually wearing it honestly i think this is a really clever way to trick the device but i honestly don't encourage it to be the main way you are using a vital bracelet but it is very useful if there are certain times when you can't wear your vital bracelet in the day but you still want the Digimon to continue operating so uh, for example if you're going for a swim now we all know that the vital bracelet is not waterproof and if you go for a swim your device is dead with the vital bracelet so this is a great way for you to go for a one hour swim but without having to pause your device or to uh, put your Digimon on backup and the evolution timer can still continue running by tricking the vital bracelet into thinking that you're still wearing it while you go for that swim it could also be a dinner function that you feel it's too uh, formal for you to wear your vital bracelet and that's a great way for you to not wear your vital bracelet but continue letting your digimon continue uh, on the vital bracelet itself so it is a useful tip but try not to abuse it because otherwise honestly it defeats the purpose of the vital bracelet right now the last tip tip number eight was supposed to answer a really tricky question that many players have should i fight on a stage that has a high rate level and high points multiplier or should i fight on a lower stage rate which has a lower points multiplier which is the best way for me to get as many rate points as possible so that i can rank highly this is a question that I wanted uh, to answer myself and to find the answer myself. And at the point of the Black War Greymon raid, I had conclusive evidence on which way is the best. But interestingly, 
in the latest raid that is with uh, Venom Van Demon currently. That's the current raid that this video is done. Suddenly, uh, some things have been changed and I'll explain more with the footages. As you can see in this uh, footage when I'm fighting Black War Greymon, clearly I could not defeat Black War Greymon uh, because it's a really high level stage and the, the boss has a lot of HP. So I was trying to compare the points that I've gained against the damage that I've dealt. And it's very clear if you watch through this to the end of this footage specific uh, stage, the points that I've gained uh, at the end of that clip equates exactly to the amount of damage that I've dealt. I think it's around 6,000 or so. So the, the multiplier was not applied. Um, from after I've done the damage, there was no multiplier on the, the damage that I've done for the points. It's exactly the same. But in the next video that you can see, in the, a similar Black Wall Greymon stage, but it's at a lower level and a lower multiplier, I've won the stage because of the other players uh, participating but it's really clear that um, from the amount of damage that I've done after the stage is over and I've won there is a multiplier applied and you can see the points actually equate to the damage that I've dealt multiplied by the multiplier so at this point it seemed like conclusive evidence to me that when you win a raid that is when the points multiplier are applied. And if you lose a raid, the multiplier is not applied. So that was the advice I was going to give uh, based on what I found. But as of today, especially since the Venom Vendi raid has started, I have noticed a different observation. So as you can see in my next footage, when my Imperial Dramon is fighting Venom Vemdi, even though he loses the stage, you can see at the end of that specific clip, the damage that has been dealt in totality has a multiplier effect attached to it. So this is in contradiction to the first footage that I captured when I was fighting the Black War Greymon raid. I have no idea what happened, I have only three possible guesses to why there is this contradiction. One, um, Bandai decided to change the mechanic of the raid because originally if you were going to lose a raid and you weren't av awarded the bonus multiplier, it is a really big disadvantage and many players would potentially not want to fight at higher levels because the gain from fighting a higher level raid is not realized because when you fight a higher level, you don't defeat, you just don't get the multiplier, then it just doesn't make sense. You would fight at a safer rate level. So that could be one of the reasons why they might have changed the mechanic and that it could explain the contradiction that I observed. The second possible explanation is that it was about a glitch that was not supposed to happen in that Black War Greymon raid. And so they fixed it on the server side and decided that now in the Venom Vendi raid, uh, it is going according to how it was originally designed that even if you lose a raid, you're still going to get a multiplier. So it could have been a glitch from the beginning. Or the third explanation could be that it's just a specific glitch to a specific user that it's just my app that has a problem that I'm not getting a multiplier during the Black War Greymon raid. Now, whatever the explanation is, the fact remains that for the Venom Vemd raid now, even if you lose the raid, you will still get the bonus multiplier. And honestly, this is just the third time they are launching a raid event. There could be many changes down the road that changes the mechanics of the raids and potentially the tips and advice on raids could change as well. So if there are new changes, I will proceed to make newer videos. Uh, on how you should maximize your rate points or how you can maximize your rate points but honestly this is currently what I have honestly I'm really dissatisfied with the answer I've gotten so far due to the contradiction and I still feel like I don't have a conclusive answer to that question is it better to fight at a higher rate level or to fight at a lower rate level 
which is better for me to get as many points as possible. But um, one thing that I observed that could be quite useful and is a strategy that I'm going with is reliant on one observation that I've made. I have observed that at very high levels, as you can see in my footage at about level 70 plus, the bosses are really difficult to defeat because of two reasons. One, he has an extremely high HP. Now that's easy. But the other thing that I've observed is that he is able to dodge many of my attacks consistently. So there were many times at a high level when I'm fighting the boss, I have landed zero to one hit. Now, even if in the new system, the, if you lose that stage, you will still get the multiplier. If you have only hit once, you're only dealing about 1,000 damage. Even at a 2.5 multiplier, or 2.6 multiplier, you're only getting 2,600 points for every rate attempt or rate ticket that you use. On the other hand, if you're fighting at a lower rate level of around 25 or 30, you can consistently deal about three to even five blows to your boss. And dealing three to five blows will give you about 6,000 damage easily. And with a 1.5 times multiplier, 6,000 will easily give you about 9,000 to 10,000 points per ticket. So my recommendation is still the fact that if you're fighting a boss at a high level, due to the boss's stats and his ability to dodge more attacks, you're potentially going to deal less damage and therefore even with the high multiplier, the trade-off doesn't make sense. So my recommendation would be to fight at a lower level but one with a respectable <laughs> multiplier for the amount of damage that you can do. So not too low, if you're, you're fighting rate levels of 5, yes, you can de easily defeat the boss and you you would be able to deal some damage. But if you're fighting such a low level, there's a chance that you might be dealing only one blow to the boss and other players are coming in to finish the boss off. So you might be dealing maybe 3,000 damage. And then multiplied by 1.1, you are going to get about 4,000 points at most per ticket, which is not maximizing your damage. So you would want to fight at a higher level, but not one that is too high, but not one that is too low as well. So I think level 25 to level 30 is something that I find quite comfortable for my Digimon to participate in. And that's my recommendation for which level of read is the best. So those are all the tips I have for you today. I hope you enjoy watching the video and I hope you found it useful uh, for you as you continue to read. All the best in uh, participating in the raids. I hope you get all the limited edition banners and the storage capsules that you want. And uh, if you have not checked out my video earlier for more useful tips and tricks on the Vital Bracelet, do check it out. I hope you find it useful. And if you like this video, uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I do have a playlist journalizing all the Digimons that are raised and it captures all the animation of the Digimon on the Vital Bracelet app as well. And if you like to keep a journal of yourself, uh, do feel free and do share in the comments below. If you have any other tips and suggestions as well, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll leave them open and uh, you can ask me any questions if you want in the video. Otherwise, thank you. I hope you enjoy your Vital Bracelet journey and thank you. Peace.